Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and those that are present here in the chambers at City Hall and those who are at home watching this online. I'd like to welcome you to the Scrap Tire Management Information Session. Uh, we have one today at 6 o'clock, and we have a, another one at Thursday at 1 o'clock at City Hall. Uh, today is uh, September the 20th, and the time is now 6 o'clock, and we'll go ahead and begin. I want to preface my remarks by indicating that on June the 1st of 2021, uh, the Macon Bibb County Commission passed by a vote of nine to zero, a ordinance of Macon Bibb County Commission to amend chapter 12 and chapter 22 of the Macon Bibb County Code of Ordinances for the purpose of establishing a scrap tire management ordinance and for other lawful purposes. Macon Bibb County finds that the improper management of scrap tires poses a threat to the environmental, health, safety, welfare, and economic progress of Macon Bibb County. For those reasons, we have scheduled a uh, information session today to do a brief presentation by our attorney, Sarah Davis, who is here with us today from the county attorney's office, uh, to answer any questions or concerns you may have. We'll have another one of these on Thursday at one o'clock. Uh, the same presentation will be provided in the question and answer session for those of you that are in attendance. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is we wanna be as transparent and informative as possible for all business owners uh, and individuals that this may affect. Uh, we wanna let you know up front that we're gonna begin um, enforcement which may include citations and other things that'll be mentioned here today. And before doing the enforcement, since this is a potential change or at least the enforcement part of it for Macon Bibb County, we wanna make sure we had an open public hearing in that regards. So this time I'm gonna turn it over to our attorney, Sarah Davis, and she's gonna walk you through the process and we'll ask any questions at the end of our, our presentation today. Thank you and good evening. I'm Sarah Davis, I'm an assistant county attorney. I work here in our county attorney's office. Um, if you were personally invited here by letter, it's because we identified you as a tire business here in Macon Bibb County. We wanted to invite you um, to update you on the relatively new ordinance. This is a whole new section added to our code of ordinances, as the mayor said in June. Um, and we are about to begin enforcement. And so we wanted to make sure that y'all were brought up to date on the new law in case you haven't been paying attention so that you're aware whenever our code enforcement officers start stopping by your businesses. You can go to the next slide. You can go to the next one. Thank you. This article that we just added, as I said, was effective June 1, 2021. It's going to be Chapter 22, Article 7, Section 22180 through Section 22185 of the Macon Bibb County Code of Ordinances. So that's going to be your reference whenever you look it up. Previously, the only thing that addressed scrap tires in our old code section was um, it was in section 12, 138 through 142, which has since been changed. And it was in the pest control section of the code. Well, the pest control section, the main, the main priority there was to prevent tires accumulating um, and then being stored outside in the rain so that mosquitoes were breeding. Because our new, our new code wants to address much more than that. We've had, uh, we've had to shift some of those code sections around and make this a much broader law with a little bit more enforcement provision. You can go to the next slide. So under the new code section, what is a scrap tire? A scrap tire is a tire that is no longer suitable for its original intended purpose because of wear, damage, or defect. I want you to pay attention whenever you're reading through those code sections to the places where we say scrap tire or used tire because a used tire can be a scrap tire but not like a new tire will never be a scrap tire and the code changes definitions in a couple of places so I just wanted to bring that to your attention a scrap tire is gonna be one that's no longer suitable for its original purpose versus a used tire. You may be in the business of selling a used tire and those are still gonna be usable and that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about scrap tires. You can go to the next slide. The new section 22181 deals with the responsibility for tires on, per, on people's property. It places the burden of um, handling and disposing scrap tires 
on property, both property owners and those in control of property. That means if you lease the property, you have to make sure you have the responsibility of handling and managing those tires. If you are a uh, business manager, you too would have the responsibility of managing and disposing of those tires properly. And if you're the owner, so this doesn't just uh, fall back onto your owner. You can't say, well, I just lease the property. This isn't my responsibility. It is both the owner and your responsibility if you're leasing the property. You can go to the next slide. If you find tires have been dumped on your property, you must within five business days report that to code enforcement here with the county. It is uh, because it's your responsibility as the owner or, uh, or the person leasing that land you can be held accountable for those tires being on your land if you do not uh, let code enforcement know. So you have five business days to alert code enforcement and you need to keep a record of that and then code enforcement will keep a record of that. You can go to the next slide. Section 22182 deals with storage and accumulation. This is a throwback to the old uh, mosquito prevention section. The general rule is you cannot have more than 10 scrap tires at any given time. Now there are several exceptions to that. You can have them if you are a solid waste disposal site with a permit by the EPD. You can have more if you are a tire retailer or publicly owned maintenance facility. You can have more if you're a tire retreader. You can have more if you're a licensed used motor vehicle parts dealer, a registered secondary metals recycler, or a privately owned vehicle maintenance facility. Or you can have more if you're a scrap tire processor. All of those exceptions come straight out of Georgia law, and the Georgia law definitions will apply in that case. Let me cite you the reference to Georgia law. It's OCGA 12 8 40.1 G and 12840.1 G1. These rules or these exceptions have already applied to you by virtue of Georgia law. And so it's your, gonna be your responsibility if you have more than 10 tires to know which exception you fall under and be able to justify that when code enforcement shows up. Another exception is that farms may have up to 100 if those are being used for agricultural purposes. Again, that's in that comes straight out of Georgia law. And so if you have a farm and you're using them for goats to jump on, if you're using them for feeding troughs, you're just going to be able to need to prove to, uh, to code enforcement that that is the purpose and that you're not just hoarding scrap tires. You can go to the next slide. Um, so if you're going to retire, if you're going to, no matter how many you have, 10 fewer or more than 10, there are certain uh, provisions that apply. If you're going to have 10 or fewer, you have to drain your scrap tires of water and store them in a covered or enclosed area to prevent the accumulation of water. That's everybody. If you have one scrap tire on your property, it needs to be drained of water and stored in a covered area. If you have more than 10 scrap tires, you need to fall under one of the exceptions I already discussed. The tires have to be drained of water and stored dry. They have to be covered. And then you will have to demonstrate to code enforcement or the health department how your storage mechanism prevents water. You might have to put up tarps or something like that um, around the enclosed area to prevent rain coming in sideways. It's gonna be up to you to prove to code enforcement how, how you're going to prevent accumulation of water. You can go to the next slide. Under section 22183, you cannot dump tires in Macon anywhere, including on the streets, in the waterways, in dumpsters, on private property, unless you fall under one of these exceptions, or unless you meet all three of these exceptions. This is not one. The property has been designated by Macon Bibb County or the Environmental Protect Protection Division. That is a department or that is a uh, branch of the Georgia Department of Natural Resources for the collection and disposable, disposal of scrap tires. The tires have to be placed in a designated receptacle. That means a place where it's clearly identified that that's where scrap tires go. And the property owner has to have a valid solid waste handling permit that's issued by the EPD or approval 
by the EPD or county if they don't have that permit. So there's occasionally times where the EPD will allow it, allow um, a property owner to handle the waste without, you know, for a one one off time without issuing issuing that official permit. But you, it needs to have uh, that special permission if they don't have the permit. People in control of property, like I said, cannot allow others to dump tires on their property without uh, authorization of make and bid. If you find, once again, if you find that your property has a bunch of scrap tires dumped on it, you have five business days after finding those tires to alert, alert code enforcement. You can go to the next slide. Okay, this is where the bulk of uh, the scrap tire regulation uh, related to businesses is. So I wanna uh, slow down and go through these you know, in a little bit more depth than I have for the rest of them. Let me just run through these definitions. A scrap tire generator is any person who generates scrap tires other than an individual who generates them and maintaining their own personal vehicle. A scrap tire carrier is any person engaged in picking up or transporting scrap tires not otherwise exempted in the Georgia Rules of Solid Waste Management for the purpose of removal to a scrap tire processor, end user, or disposal facility. A scrap tire processor is any person who is approved by the EPD, that's the Environmental Protection Division, to receive scrap tires from scrap tire generators or carriers for, for the purpose of processing. Um, I have provided lists down front if you want to get them, and then you can get them online later, um, that ha list every approved scrap tire carrier and every approved scrap tire processor in Georgia and the few that do business with Georgia from out of state. We have very few in Macon processors, and so this, this definition doesn't apply to anyone or to many people in Macon. So if you think you're a scrap tire processor, please check with the EPD to make sure you're licensed to do that work. Um, it, it needs to be done through the EPD and not just because you are tearing down scrap tires yourself. Scrap tire sorters are any person other than the original generator who handles mixed tires by separating used tires and retreadable tires from scrap tires. And then retail tire dealers is a person actively engaged in the business of selling new replacement tires or used tires. And that will capture the majority of people we invited here today. They're going to be retail tire dealers. You can go to the next slide. <laughs> this is um, related to subsection A of section 22184. What we did with this subsection is that we have codified into Macon Bibb County's Code of Ordinances, the state law by incorporation. What that means is it's all the requirements of state law and in the Georgia rules of solid waste management are now applicable and enforceable by our code enforcement department here at the county level. We did this uh, to add an additional layer of notice for y'all here in Macon Bibb County and to allow for local enforcement by code enforcement and not just the sheriff's department. Both the Georgia law and the rules are available are available for you to review on the Georgia uh, EPD website. There's uh, a link for it here, and if you want the, a copy of this slide presentation, we can make that available to you, so you can just click that link. You can go to the next slide. Section 22184, subsection B, relates only to scrap tire generators. That is, anyone who generates scrap tires other than at, at the, for their own personal cars at home. If you do that, you must obtain a scrap tire generator number from the Environmental Protection Division. There is a form on their website. You submit that to them, and they give you a, a number and a permit. Every location of your business needs a separate number. It's not just one for your whole business. The next thing you must do is maintain a manifest of scrap tires that have been shipped or removed from the business location within the last 36 months. So you need to keep a record uh, for 36 months with your manifest. I have up front provided a copy of the manifest. It is not just a form you fill out in a book that you keep for your own records. This is an official form published by EPD 
that goes back and forth between the tire carriers and your business. And it follows a, a, follows a process. You fill out the first part, the f tire uh, carrier fills out the second part and then they return it to you and you have to keep those for 36 months. Those will need all the things listed on this slide, a name and ID number of the generator, that's you if you are the scrap tire generator, the name and total tonnage of scrap tires, the name and permit number of the carrier, that's the person transporting the tires, the date of transportation, the destination, that means where are they gonna end up, and the signature of all three parties, the generator, the carrier, and the processor, and the processor is the, the person they're gonna end up with or the entity they're gonna end up with. If an enforcement officer requests, that means if code enforcement comes in and requests, uh, you have to provide your scrap tire generator ID number issued by the EPD and your manifest for their review. And then it's your duty as the scrap tire generator to ensure that scrap tires are being carried by an approved scrap tire carrier. And that's going to be from an EPD list, which I've provided up front, and I can get you the website for later. You can go to the next slide. We're still on scrap, or so we're going to switch over to scrap tire carriers. It's section 22184C. These are the people who transport scrap tires within the state. Any person who transports scrap tires in Georgia must return a completed copy of the tire ma manifest to the generator within 30 days from taking possession, possession of the tires. That means if you pick up tires from a business, you have 30 days to return that manifest. We're gonna now assume that all of our generators are providing you with manifest. Now it's your duty to return the manifest to them. You have to either obtain a carrier permit from the EPD and they'll give you a sticker to place on your window of the vehicle transporting the tires or fall into a category below, which are the exceptions. Those exceptions, I'll read them out for you are a municipal solid waste collector holding a valid solid waste collection permit. That's gonna be like um, waste management or Ryland. We're talking about people who are picking up the city's trash. A private individual transporting no more than 10 of the individual's own tires or more than 10 if such individual can provide proof of purchase with receipt for such tires. So if you are an individual <laughs> transporting more than 10 of your own scrap tires, you need to bring the receipts for those with you. A company transporting the company's own tires to a scrap tire processor or end user, user for proper disposal so you can transport your own business's tires to the end user without using a permitted carrier. A tire retailer transporting its own used tires, if such dealer can provide proof of purchase with receipt for all used tires being transported, and you, there's more document requirements. Any person transporting tires collected as part of an organized site cleanup activity, so if the county hosts uh, a cleanup day, you can transport tires without that permit. And then uh, governmental entities are exempted. You can go to the next slide. Section 22184D deals with tire handling businesses. This is a broader definition than retail tire dealers and it captures more people, so I want you to pay attention to this. A tire handling business is any person, and that include businesses, includes businesses, that derive 10% more of their gross income from the sale, processing, transporting, or disposal of tires. And that does not just include scrap, scrap tires, that's all tires. You have special requirements on you. You have to keep an inventory of all new and used tires that are received, sold, sent to another business, or shipped to an approved processor. And you have to be able to provide that inventory to a code enforcement officer when they request it. You can go to the next slide. Those are the provisions dealing with the requirements under our new code section. I'm just gonna highlight the enforcement uh, The enforcement. Uh, section here. Uh, enforcement measures can be taken now by code enforcement as well as the sheriff's office, the solid waste inspector, or any law enforcement officer agency or official of the state. The main thing to take away from this is now code enforcement or the solid waste inspector here at the county level can now enforce these provisions. 
violators will see, receive notice of the violation and be allowed 10 days to remediate the situation. If you have tires on your property that have to be removed by the county after that 10 day period, uh, the violator will be subject to a $25 uh, dollar per tire fee for that removal. Finally, in addition to that fee, or if we don't have to remove tires, you can still be subject to fines and penalties up to $1,000 and 180 days in jail per violation. I did wanna point out that every count of a violation or every day of a, the recurring violation count as another count subject to another $1,000 fine or 180 days in jail. And I think that's all of it. Do y'all have any questions? Yes, sir. Got one question. If you don't mind, uh, Mr. Bush, if you'll come up to the microphone there, if you identify yourself and then state your question, then we'll try to answer it to our best of our ability. My name is Larry Bush, and I was just looking at the uh, section 22184D, um, tire handling businesses. So I'm assuming that would include a retail tire store such as myself. Um, so keep an inventory of all new and used tires that are received by the business, sold to a customer, sent to another tire handling business or shipped to an approved processor in a case like mine that inventory is going to be very fluid it's going to change hour by hour day by day and keeping up with each set that I sold to a customer I mean we have software that shows all of our tire sales but as far as having something some sort of manifest to be able to show to somebody that's that's not really practical um, if I'm if I'm reading it right I mean, my, my inventory at 10 o'clock in the morning is going to be different than it is at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Because I'll, I'll receive, you know, dozens of tires throughout the day and sell dozens to people, and so it's very fluid. Has, has that been taken into consideration, or am I reading it right? I, I think you're reading it right. I think the, uh, the intent uh, is exactly what you're already doing. Uh, I've talked to many tire dealers already. The state has, has had this on the books for quite a while. Uh, unfortunately, a couple years ago, they lost the enforcement mechanism. Um, they couldn't afford to do that. that. I'm sure you're doing it uh, correctly. Uh, it's going to be within reason. Uh, we know it's a fluid process. Uh, we'll look at the last manifest that you have uh, to, that shows accurately what you uh, have put into to the market and actually transported somewhere else. The, the problem we've had is, uh, quite honestly, is we've had some uh, tire dealers who um, may not use the best person to take the tires to somewhere else. Sure. And we're becoming a large dumping ground here in Macon Bibb County. So we want to be able to trace the amount of tires you're taking into your location on an average basis. I know there's going to be some fluctuation there. Making sure we can trace those all the way to the intended uh, uh, the end right. and uh, make sure that we track those to hold you responsible as well as the person that you retain uh, responsible for delivery to the, to the place they're supposed to do so. Sure. So we want our code enforcement, in particular in this case here, to be able to go to the location to uh, get those documents, the manifest there, so we can track how many tires are coming into your location and make sure that it goes to the right place at the end. Uh, in the past, we've run up in illegal dumping sites, and we know that uh, three or four tires is not the norm that we find. We find several hundred tires right. at a location, and, and quite honestly, it's not coming from individuals. It's coming from people that were perhaps hired by a company to transport their tires, and they simply just dump them in Macon Bibb County. We have to be able to trace those there, and this is our mechanism to do that. I know you already do this process now, so it's going to be within reason. We understand it's going to be fluid. So the, the manifest that you speak of, so would I, which I don't do this currently, but would I need to, to have a kind of an in and out type sheet that I receive these four tires from my supplier at 10.04 and put them on this car and keep that on a fluid basis, or can I just say, you know, here's my stack of invoices. I got these in. Here's my stack of receipts where I sold them. Now, as far as disposal, I, I mean, that, that's all documented, um, but not the in and out of the inventory. Right. What we're concerned about, mainly the disposal, how you get rid of these keys. It, the forms that we have up there, we're happy to talk to you offline. They're very self-explanatory. It's something you probably already are doing there mm -hmm. now. Uh, it's more the ones who actually – are doing the retread and, and the reuse of these tires that become scrap tires and the disposal of those. So you have a place that you keep them at safe in the building that you have until they get picked up on a regular basis by your uh, scrap remover. Right. And it's probably a reputable company that takes it outside uh, of Macon Bibb yes. County. And that's typically what we want to do. Uh, relatively easy process. The forms are very generated. The problem is, is we have a lot of new businesses in Macon Bibb County 
who are not completing the proper paperwork right. because the state no longer enforces those. Macon Bibb County has deemed it a priority for us to take the initiative to do sure. the enforcement ourselves. So we're going to begin doing that, and we wanted people to know and ask the good questions Absolutely. like you do to make sure we're all on the same page before our code enforcement stops at the door and you have 100 tires at $25 a piece sure. and the potential for some jail time. Absolutely. So we want you we to ask all that. the questions necessary. <laughs> okay. uh, everyone's sitting at home. We have the forms here. we got the capability of sending you all the links that you need to have if you're not here today, but I appreciate you being here and asking these questions. And we want to make sure we get it right. This is not a gotcha moment. Sure. This is what we're trying to do to protect our community. And while we're on this subject, we, are, we do have a uh, amnesty period coming up in November where anybody can bring any, any amount of tires that they have uh, to the location that we will have here and Macon Bibb County has several locations so we can make sure they're properly disposed in, in the correct places and we'll be announcing that very soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any additional questions uh, for those of you that are here? Uh, if you have any questions in your own line, you can, uh, you can send that information to us and we'll be able to answer those by email if we get your information or we'll be back on Thursday at one o'clock and we'll be sure to answer those questions uh, before we begin the question and answer session at one o'clock. Again, this is our attempt to be open and transparent to make sure that when we enact a new ordinance that affects a business doing a business here in Macon Bibb County, uh, that we'll, we'll let you know what you can expect as far as a compliance uh, situation. And we wanna make sure that we get this information out as soon as possible. We did pass this back in June the 1st, like I mentioned earlier, as a nine to zero vote from our commissioners. Uh, but we are now beginning to enforce that. And our code enforcement has very specific instructions about when to begin uh, and the process that they need to take care of. So we're letting everybody know at this time. So I appreciate everyone being here today and for being online. If there's no further questions that brings us here today, we'll return here at one o'clock on Thursday, September the 23rd. And I will, like Commissioner Lucas has her light on. Apologize, Commissioner Lucas joining us today for this, for this hearing. Thank you. Um, it was a, a, a delight for me to sign on as a co-sponsor when uh, Commissioner Howell uh, looked at this, this, and we thank the legal department for working so hard on it. My uh, question uh, relates to uh, private property owners who find tires on their property. I'd just like for you to speak just a little bit more about that and the requirement that property owners report very quickly and I know that every situation is going to be different there might not be uh, you know a person might own a lot of property and they might not see it uh, those kinds of things I know you can't handle you don't have a one-size-fits-all but would you just kind of review um, and summarize the property owners responsibility yes ma'am if you're a property owner here in Macon Bibb County if you find that tires have been dumped on your property, you have five business days from finding those tires to report that to code enforcement. We made it the responsibility of owners and those in control of property. So that can be someone leasing the property. This isn't just on owners. So if you're leasing a property and the owners live in a different state, it's, it's you as the person leasing the property. Once you find those tires, you have to let code enforcement know within five business days, and that will prevent uh, enforcement mechanisms for ta from taking effect. You won't be fined the $25 per, dollar per tire fine if you can show that you let code enforcement know within those five business days. Days. Okay. okay thank you I just wanted to make that clear because you know people are, are being given additional responsibility and kind of watching their property and if they know they've had stuff dumped on their property before they need to be a little bit more vigilant in watching and reporting too. thank you Commissioner Lucas and thank you for your support on that ordinance as well as for your presence here today uh, I know you're very active in your community and we've had some of these uh, illegal dumps in your community that's had to be addressed. So we think this is gonna be a good thing for Macon Bibb County. We're excited about um, all the great work that our attorneys have done. I know this is uh, tedious work and sometimes can be a little boring if you're sitting at home, but as Mr. Bush can tell you, it's very important. It's the way he earns his living, he supports his family, and it's something that's very important to keep our community clean. So we're looking forward to having this again on, on Thursday at one o'clock and we'll be here at the same uh, city hall. It'll be on Facebook Live as well. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask those questions tonight. We'll be sure to answer those on Thursday uh, at the appropriate time so you don't have to be in person to uh, be represented. So if there's no other business that brings us here today and no additional questions at this time, uh, we're going to hereby adjourn this meeting. Thank you.